plan to do is just to go over the test. I have, there's basically two versions of the test. And so I think I'm gonna, just gonna kind of alternate between the two. Unless you have a request for me to do your test, I'll do that as well. If you have someone out there really wants me to do their test instead. But I uh, just plan to work through the test. Uh, so a bit about the test. Without, there was, there's one zero. So without the zero, there's like a 70 average and like a 73 median. Uh, and with it is like a 66 average and like a 70 median. Um, the distribution is okay, I guess. Um, it's a bit lower than I'd like to see. <laughs> I'd like to see everyone get an A. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, it was like really quiet. Oh, sorry, I'm sick today. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was a little off of it yesterday. I, uh... I I couldn't open my test last time because I said I needed the lockdown browser. Okay. Um, it should still be on there. Like you should be able to open it up the grade. If you go like view my grade and go to the assignment, can you not see it? I think that's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, but when I click it, it says I need the lockdown browser. To even view the grade? Yeah, that's what it says. Uh, Could you change the settings? I think you can just go to, hmm. Cause I'm looking at the grade and it gives me the grade, but then when I click on the grade, it says you cannot review something without lockdown browser. Cause I, I, I re-uploaded your PDF. I wrote on the PDF and I like re-uploaded it to like, there's a response that I can give to you in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so you should be able to like access that PDF that I have has some writing on it. Um, did anybody else have that problem? Can you explain how, how y'all did this? <laughs> Maybe help them out a little bit. Are you seeing my test grade? Yeah, he's talking about having to do it through the lockdown browser. Okay, I think I got the, I got the PDF now. Because what you do instead is you click on the little balloon next to it instead of clicking on the grade itself. Yeah, this is all new to me. I haven't seen y'all's perspective on this thing or, or gone through that. Okay. Yeah, I don't need this. Anything, any questions over anything that we've done so far? So I know like I'm, I'm a little bit behind on the videos, but right after this class, I'm going to put up 6.5. Um, I usually put them up before class, but that will get up shortly. And so that will be up soon. Um, so we're going through the test. I guess drawing it out enough. Let's do it. Let's go to my video. Start with test A. <laughs> So problem one, we have this equation C equals 300 plus 15 P. This models the relationship between the cost in dollars and number of people P. Find the cost of the number of people is 60. So I think pretty much everyone, I think, got this one correctly. I don't remember anybody getting this incorrect. 15 by 60. Let me get the rest of my calculator. 900 plus 300 is what, 1200? Now this, <laughs> I think a lot of people got points off for something graph related. <clears throat> um, so for some reason, a lot of people were like switching their axes. So on your X axis should be your X variable or here, this is like my X variable is my P 
that's the number of people. So the X axis should have been people. The Y axis should have been the other thing, cost. <clears throat> uh, so we got to count this thing. So what do I need? I need at least what, 1200 in the cost. I know. Well, hundred a point. Also no zero. What three hundred a point? Uh, so if I do twelve, I'm gonna do twelve. Yeah, I made mine just by the hundred. So one thing that people are doing, we want to like have consistent intervals. Some people would go like the same space and go like 10 and then they go like 30 and then like a hundred or something like that. It's like, you want to like space these things kind of evenly because they wouldn't space them evenly and there's, it's supposed to be a straight line. Right. And so it wouldn't be a straight line. It'd go like that and go like that or something. It's like, uh, it's gotta be a straight line. So I know it doesn't have to be perfect or exact, but we need to go from what zero to up to 60 and the people at least. So like probably what, 20 probably would get there. 24, 60, 80, 100. So I don't think I was too picky as long as you got a semi like decent reasonable scale on there. Um, zero, 300 is a point. And what, 60, 1200? And I'm being kind of lazy. I should probably like number the scale out, right? Bring a little through. But this is what the lines are going to look like. So interpret the slope and in y-intercept of the equation. So going back up to this equation. This is my slope. This is my y-intercept. The slope is the thing attached to your variable. Uh, so, B is 300. So, I think, yeah, I think most people probably got this correct. There were a few people that, like, I think they got confused on something else on the points or something and they'd put the point down 60 or something. I don't know. Um, but for the most part, I think a lot of people got this correct. The thing that most people missed was this interpret part. So I'm going to start out with this. I think this is the easier thing to describe. So the 300 in my B is a cost, but you also have to tell me it is a flat rate or flat cost. So $300, like flat cost. Initial cost would also be fine. Cost if there were zero people. That's really descriptive of what it is. That's good. You know exactly what you're talking about. Any one of those sorts of things is what we're talking about. It is the thing that we're starting at. This 15 is $15. This is also a cost, but this is $15 per person. And this is the value thing we have to do. Change in Y over change in X, four to be our slope. And the units on my Y is cost, and the units on my X is people. So the, this, the slope will be in cost per people. So anytime you're interpreting a slope and you don't have the word like per in there, right, you're probably not defining that thing correctly. There should be really something that indicates there's division, right? And that per is what's indicating division. Make that slope per like a kitty, I guess. Dropping papers. I know I went through that kind of quickly, probably. Are there any questions over this problem, over what was expected? I know I wrote some pretty good notes on your test themselves. I did spend time writing notes, so please do look at them.
Um, so the slope is cost over the number of people. Uh huh. Or cost per person. Or it'll be fifteen dollars for each person. That's also a really good way to talk about it, right? For each person. That's also indicating we're dividing by like the number of people. It's hard for me to write it sometimes in English and get all the details in there without sounding convoluted. Because you have to be specific. Um, I mean, this is the verbiage I'm looking for here. I mean, there's there's probably a few other ways to do it, but I mean, this this will get be guaranteed to get you some points. I don't know. As I wrote, slope is number of people times cost per person. I don't know if I wrote that the right. The slope is the cost per person. The number of people is the p variable, and so you're telling me two things there when you should be telling me one sort of thing. Which, which I, you're probably understanding it correctly in your head, but it's just not <laughs> being verbalized correctly, right? So it's a cost per person for each person? Uh, yeah, I would say out of the universe, people have options. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's what I Cost per person, okay. Yeah, it was either $15 per person or $15 for each person. Because it seemed to me like if I just wrote that the slope is the cost per person, that mm -hmm. would be... That would be correct. $15, right? Yeah. But if it's just $15, that's only considering the cost per person. It's not considering that there's also going to be a number of people involved. If you just put the cost per person, I, I think you're just kind of writing like half the slope, aren't you? No, because the, the number of people involved is this thing right here, your P variable. Okay. That's what's accounting for multiple people. Um, I think that the number 15 is already the cost per person. I think that already takes care of it regardless of whether or not there's even people involved, it's still going to cost $15 per person. So that's why I felt like if I didn't write, it's the cost per person multiplied by the actual number of people that I'm only giving part of what the slope is. Uh, so you are going to multiply this by the number of people. You're correct there, but the slope itself is only the cost per person. Okay. Because we have the cost per person and we multiply it by people to get something that is a cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I must have overthought that one. Yeah. I think you're just putting like a few extra words there. Okay. Number two, and this is in test B. <clears throat> this should be the equation of the line. So it's picking off my intercept off of a graph. Any questions? I think that was that one. I don't know. I think some of y'all just look, got cross-eyed or something looking at the graph. I think most people understood what they were doing. There's a few people that were way off. Find the equation of the line containing those two points. Minus six, minus four. What is minus 10, minus 4, 5 half? Right. And then we got some choices. We can pick and choose either one of those. 
I'm going to what, subtract six. But minus six from minus five halves, so you have to find a common denominator. So 12 halves is six. 12 divided by two is six, right? So that is going to give me minus 17. Oh man, I know when I was grading this, someone was like right there at the end step and they messed up like just by like a positive or negative sign. It was so close. I can feel your frustration on those things. <clears throat> Like you're so close, just messed up on a negative sign at the end. Okay. <clears throat> Is that two, three? I'm going to jump to the other test. Four and five. Let's over a little bit. Okay. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to that line and passing through the point six, five. To find the slope of this line. To find the perpendicular slope, you have to find the slope of this line first. So to do that, we have to rearrange things equals minus 3x plus 8. Y equals minus 3 over minus 6. X plus 8 over minus 6. So I don't even care about this thing. This is the thing I want to look at right here. So 3 over 6, they are both negative. That is the same thing as my slope being 1 half. If I want a perpendicular slope, I've got to flip it and reverse it to minus 2. Okay. Did all that work just to find a slope? Now I have to go and plug this thing back into an equation. So y minus 5 equals minus 2, uh, x minus 6. Minus 2, x plus 12. And I have to add 5. So the process is to find the slope on the first guy, flip and reverse the slope for the perpendicular slope, and then we plug that into point slope and solve for slope intercept. All right, let's do five on here and then we'll jump to the other one. <laughs> uh, I should have made y'all like tell me which one's horizontal and vertical, uh, but This one's vertical, this one's horizontal. I should have made y'all label them. I think a few people did. I think most people got the labels right. There was one person that got the labels wrong, but I didn't count off because I didn't ask for it and just didn't want to don't want to start taking off points for things I didn't ask. It's kind of... <laughs> Okay, so six, I totally messed up. So if you had the other test, you could completely ignore this. I didn't look at your domain and range whatsoever on these because I meant to give y'all one that was a function and one that wasn't. So that, that I kind of failed on doing that. 
And so since I couldn't ask you them the domain and range on this one, I can't really go and grade the domain and range on the other one. And this is not a function. And again, reviewing why it's not a function, right, is because we have the same x, different y, right? We have a vertical line here. It's not going to pass. Uh, this one. Again, this is not a function. But this one is a function. And so I will go over the domain and range on this guy. Um, and in general, if I don't have arrows on something, just kind of assume arrows are there. Uh, Desmos doesn't put arrows on your graph. I guess I could go in by hand and draw them, but I'm kind of lazy. So y'all just, y'all have an active imagination. Just pretend. So let's go to my, in my domain. It's going all the way left and right. Infinity, and it is going up to some number you probably can't tell, right? Let's just say three. <laughs> So I definitely didn't think that problem all the way through, but it worked for, is it a function or not a function? I tested that much. We got that far. These, I was pretty impressed. I think it like, I'm trying to think if anybody, no, there was, there, there were a few that got it wrong. That's right. Most, mo, a lot of people got this right. And I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised there. Uh, G of seven is going to look like, times seven minus three or 35 minus three is going to be 32. G of X plus eight like five and we plug in X plus eight into the X minus three five X plus 40 minus three five X plus 37. Okay, let's get to this one. And so these were very similar, just they have slightly different numbers, but you could probably figure it out. So F of zero. So this, I was kind of picky with the format because I asked the format in like two different ways, right? <clears throat> and so you, if I ask for F of zero, I'm asking for a number. I'm asking for when my X is zero, what is my Y going to be? It is going to be that Y intercept number of minus six. Just the number, not the point. If F of X equals zero, this is like, where is my Y equal to zero? Where are my X intercepts? That would be the just the number. Minus four and four. So I asked for just the number. Now I'm asking you for the actual point. So this has two x intercepts and it has one y intercept. So I know I was like super picky on format on this one. So I think that's if you got something taken off on this one, I can almost guarantee you it was probably format. But some people are doing other things as well. Yeah, they're quite quiet today. All right, we got like what, two more? Uh, so, like I said, if you don't see arrows, you can kind of assume arrows, but I didn't count off whether you assume there were arrows or not. I like, you got points either way.
up to down, down to up, turn around points. Okay. Increasing would be this part and this part is where it's going up. So that's the interval. If you did infinities, minus infinity to minus one. And we also come back for do infinity. If you didn't do infinity, you probably did minus three. What's wrong? Minus three. Probably did two. Four. I think that's where it's gone. So that's increasing. Decreasing. I think we might have just flipped the graph for the other one. I can't remember. <laughs> be the thing that I haven't covered yet. It's that minus one to the two. So whether you did the infinities or you assumed it ended, I didn't count off either way because I didn't specify. But in general, in future, if I don't have arrows on my graphs, just kind of assume they're there. Um, Let's go over this one, 100 gallon tank. It's initially full of water, the tank is draining at five gallons per minute. So a lot of people got the 100 and they got the 5X. Oh man, but what, what do they do? They would put plus. No, we gotta subtract. So you can do 100 minus 5X, you can do minus 5X plus 100. Either way. So that is a linear function, F, that models the number of gallons of water in the tank after X minutes. What is the domain and range of this thing? Um, I got the domain is zero minutes to 20 minutes, and then the tank is empty. So zero to 20 in the domain? Yeah, that's good because after 20, we're going to have 100 minus 100 is going to give us zero gallons in the tank. So what is the range? So how, how, what is the lowest the tank can be is zero. The most the tank can be is the 100 gallons. And that's exactly how we'd go about graphing this thing, right? I'd find my intercepts. I know one of my intercepts is what? X is zero when my Y is 100. And y is zero, this is that 20 you found, right? Again, we can go back and find them, right? If we wanted to find our y of zero is 20, we could solve this for zero. I need to go 20 in my x's. So I think my two is probably pretty good. So if I make this my zero, I guess. And I want to do a hundred, so that's my six. Uh, uh, I got to go more than 10. Let's go by 20. 20, 40, 60, maybe 100. And so I know my two intercepts are 0, 100, and 20, 0. Grab your super cool rubber. And for this problem, I know it might be tempting, but you really just want to draw the line between those two points, right? We're talking about a problem with the 
uh, in the real world, and this is the thing that like kind of models it. If we go beyond this, we're talking about negative gallons. That's not going to make a lot of sense. And if we go to the left of this, we're talking about negative time. That's not going to make a whole lot of sense. Okay. I think it might be worthwhile going over this one because a lot of people are getting this one wrong. So the increase now is the thing in the middle that's going from minus one to two. The decrease is the one that I accepted if you wrote either sort of way. So if you went from minus infinity to minus one and from what, two to infinity, that's fine. Or if you went from, I believe, minus three to minus one. Before, if you just saw it in there. And this should be very similar. This is f of x equals like 300 minus 15x. If you wanted to write that way, I guess you could also write it minus 15x plus 300. What's the domain and range here? I think the domain is still at 0 to 20, right? 20 times 15 should give you 300. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I came out about the same. I think the range is almost the same, except now it's going, what, up to 300? Same picture. Oh, man, did I label my axis in the last one? I got points off on this. That should have been gallons. <laughs> this should have been what, minutes? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, per minute. So you should label your axes. That is something that you should do. And this is minutes, and I'm going by 20s. So I can go by two, and I can get there by zero. I'm going to get to 300. I'm probably going to just go by 50s, I think. It's probably going to get me there. 100, 200, 250. 300. So I know it goes to 0, 300. It looks very similar. I'm not even going to use a ruler this time. Ooh, that's actually pretty straight for not a ruler. I'm proud of myself. Why'd you run away? Come back. Okay. Okay. We got time. We can go over some more if you want. Back. 
Okay, so I think most people got this one. That looks very similar to the first one I did on the other one. Except it's hundred dollars less. Uh, same thing with the slope and y intercept, right? So it's fifteen dollars per person. Two hundred dollar flat. Yeah, quiet, quiet, quiet. And I don't want to draw that graph. <laughs> it looks the same as the other one. Uh, that one, you know, most people got correct. Anything else I want to go over? I'm trying to think if there's anything, any kind of common mistake that y'all made. Uh, we got plenty of time, so let's go over these two as well. So this was finding a perpendicular line. So remember the process is to find the slope on this guy first. So 2x minus 4y equals 8. We solve for y minus 4y equals minus 2x plus 8. I'm dividing by 4. y equals minus 2 over minus 4 plus 8 over minus 4. So I don't even care what that second thing says. I'm looking at this. So my first slope is one half. If I want to find a perpendicular slope, I have to flip this thing and negate it. So that is a minus two. Now I'm plugging in the point y. Into point slope. I got a point, I got a slope, I can put it in point slope. Oh no. Barbing. Um Any questions over anything, any test, any test problem you want me to go back over? Plenty of time. Anything coming up on another on the future test you want to go over? Uh have you posted like the test three review or something? Yeah, Miss Watson posted it already. Um, what is that under? It should be under homework worksheets, I believe, is what she posted. Okay. Them. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay. Yeah, that's what I really needed. That's really helpful. Okay. Help me on the last test. And let's do, I'll do a screen share. Let's look. Can you see this? Anything from here? You like maybe want to see? Do some systems of equations. What's on here? Linear modeling. Uh, so finding a slope in this table. Y'all remember how to do that, hopefully. Find the change in the X, find the change in the Y here. Put the change in the Y over the change in the X, make sure you get it in the right direction. Piecewise functions. Everybody's favorite part. That tends to be one of the more difficult ones, huh? We got systems of equations and applications. Uh, so apparently she's going to force you to do some graphs. So what does your solution look like? 
And when you have two variables. Okay, could I ask a question? Yeah. How can we check these? Like, is, is there something in the book or something we can check to make sure we're doing these right? To Right here. Oh, whoops. Yeah, they're there. The solutions are there. Functions of two variables. We've got some words. Uh, can you do the distance rate problem? Distance rate time problem? There's probably one in there somewhere. Right there. Felicia left home. Can you do a table, right? Um, can you come up with an equation for something like this? There's like 200 tickets sold with and the amount collected was 530. They give you the amount for each ticket. Can you come up with a system of equations to solve word problems like that, right? Uh, supplementary angles. Those, those. I think y'all tend to be a little stronger on those, maybe. <laughs> Can you come up with a uh, system of equations for something like this? I think it's like funny because like. I see these things and it's like, this is basically just like those Facebook memes, right? It's like two hamburgers plus one hot dog plus a French fry. <laughs> and they give you the amount. It is like one hamburger and one hot dog is this amount. It's like, how much is a French fry? And you know, y'all can totally like solve that in three seconds, but like you put some words or something and it's like, you get rid of the pictures and put some X's and Y's in there and y'all just like freak out and like, I don't know. Uh, this is an interesting one. Number 12. Can you come up with an equation for something like that? Is he investing in three different things? Or he, it's a Kelly. So 20,000 to invest. Hopes to earn 1390 in interest in the first year. It's a she. She wants her Investment in treasury bills to be 3000 more than her investment in corporate bonds. Ah, so there's three different things. So there should be three different variables there, probably. That sounds like an interesting problem. And... You should be able to do everything up to like what 14 and 15 is the only thing that we haven't done yet. You know, I've been awfully quiet, man. I wish there's like <laughs> some more, some more questions. It's like the people asking questions are like probably not the people that should be asking questions and the people not asking questions are probably the people that should be asking some questions. It's always the problem with teaching. It's like people that should say something, don't. I don't know what to do. Can't talk too much to black screen. It's silent. It's not not a lot of communication there. Sorry, I'm having trouble keeping up here because my head hurts really bad. Oh no, you're 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 fine. You're fine. I wouldn't. I was speaking I generally, not specifically today. to you. <laughs> I still have to take a nap here and then go to work. All right. Well, I don't really have much else for you unless you want to stick around, ask questions. Mm. We're about well, to the review really. looks like it's really detailed. So I think as long as I do that and then review each one of my homework assignments and stuff, and I think I'll be good. I already did all the reading. Right. Yeah, I'll post that video really quick. Uh, is it the, the, uh, what is it? Is it 6.5? Is that what we're in? I believe, Roxwald. It's a pretty short one. There's not much left on this test. We're like pretty much through most of the material. Like those matrices and the systems of equations and the word problems, those are, those are the good bulk of it. And maybe those, <laughs> the piecewise too, uh, that might be a little difficult. All 
right well i'm going to stop the recording